Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this discourse, I am discussing Mineral Discourses 72. Uh, this is again Vachagota. Uh, so if you remember, Mineral Discourse 71, Vachagota asks certain questions. And this is 72, which where Vachagota continues to ask questions. And then there is Mineral Discourse 73, where Vachagota continues to ask. So 1, 71, 72, 73 are basically showing a progression in Vachagutta's understanding, 71 was, uh, kind of, he was just curious on the path and uh, Buddha's abilities, right? 72 is like he's asking deeper, some metaphysical questions. 73 is like, uh, finally he learns about how a better way of living he can cultivate, right? So let us come to 72. And uh, in this, uh, Vachagutta went, goes up to the Buddha and asks, Master Gautama, is this your view that the cosmos is eternal? This is the only truth and the other ideas are silly. This is not my view, Vacha. So please understand here, Buddha never answered metaphysical questions, right? Because the point Buddha had is that it distracts you from your quest, right? Buddha, there was this example of a forest with trees, uh, with uh, uh, leaves. So Buddha knew a lot of things, but he did not teach all those things. Why? Because Buddha knew that I have to take my students from one point to another point and anything else that I teach can act as a distraction, right? So again, there was this another discourse where Buddha gave the example of an arrow. So if there's a poison arrow that, sh that you know, hits you, in you instead of, you first get yourself, uh, get the arrow released and uh, get the wound healed rather than questioning whether, whether from this arrow was made and, you know, who, who gave, what was his cast to the person who, 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 you know, uh, through the arrow on you, right? So, so important, Buddha wanted us to keep our focus on our getting the freedom from suffering, right? So, Buddha's teaching was, this is suffering and this is the cessation of suffering, the way out of cessation of suffering. Okay, so, Buddha said, no, this is not my view. Then he said, is this your view? That the cosmos is not eternal, there is, this is the only truth, other ideas silly, this is not my view. Then he continues to ask the same questions, like the world is finite, he said no, no, this is not my view, world is infinite, the soul and the body are the same, soul and body are different, realized one still exists even death, realized one no longer exists after death, Buddha said no, this is not my view, realized one both still exists and no longer exists after death, no, realized one still ex exists, no longer exists after death. Then. Again, Buddha said, this is not my view. Then he got like, you know, he was like uh, kind of flustered. He said, Master Gautama, when asked these 10 questions, you say, this is not my view. Seeing what drawback do you avoid asking these, do you avoid all these convictions? See, now understand this. Buddha, after getting enlightened, he has moved, he has moved, he is free from all these convictions and theories and philosophies because he has directly seen the reality as it is, right? So, you cannot bind him to a particular theory or a philosophy. So, now Buddha says, see what the Buddha's response is. Each of these 10 convictions is the, thick, thick, is the thicket of views, the desert of views, the trick of views, the evasiveness of views, the fetter of views. So, Buddha is basically saying how views, having these basically wrong views, chains us, keeps us in suffering, keeps us mired in suffering. So, if I, if I have this this thing about, you know, uh, uh, all these permanent self, that I have a permanent self, I will keep on rebirthing in this samsara because I think I have a permanent self, right? So Buddha says, these are all a trick of views, evasiveness of views, fetter of views, means a chain of views. They are beset with anguish, distress and fever. They don't lead to disillusionment, dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening and extinguishment. Seeing this drawback, I avoid all these convictions. Then he asked, uh, Vachagota asks, but does Master Gautama have any convictions at all? He said, Buddha says, the realized one has done away with convictions. For the realized one has seen, such is form, such is the origin of form, such is the ending of form, such is feeling, such is the origin of feeling, such is the ending of feeling, such is perception, such is the origin of perception, such is the ending of perception. Such are choices, such is the origin of choices, such are the ending of choices. Such is consciousness, such is the origin of consciousness, such is the ending of consciousness. 
that means all the five aggregates how these five aggregates arise what is the origin and how they end right so this is basically buddha's teaching this is buddha's realization that's why the realized one is freed with the ending fading away cessation giving up and letting go of all conceiving all worries and all ego possessiveness or underlying tendency to conceit right so buddha is now free because he has directly realized all these different different components five aggregates their origin and their cessation he has seen that right with right view so now he has that right view and all the convictions disappear but men uh, then again his questioning starts but master kotama when a mendicant's mind is freed like this where are they reborn they are reborn doesn't apply vacha right that means so vacha was asking that if the mind is totally free defilements have ended where is the person reborn buddha said the word reborn doesn't apply so then vacha asked where are they not reborn so buddha says they are not reborn doesn't apply well then are they both reborn and not reborn buddha said both reborn and not reborn does not apply then he says are they neither reborn nor not reborn buddha says they are neither reborn not nor reborn doesn't apply so again vacha gotha lost his patience master gotha when i asked all these questions you say it doesn't apply i fail to understand this point master gotha i fall in into confusion and now i have lost even the degree of clarity that i had from the previous so the earlier discussion where buddha talked about you know that he has given away all the things convictions that clarity is also now gone because he said that if a mendicant is free from everything where does he re get reborn so buddha again did not give a conviction on there now buddha said okay vacha i understand because this principle is very deep and hard to see and higher to understand that's why you are not able to understand now i ask you in question so buddha is now questioning mode buddha says suppose a fire is burning in front of you would you know that this fire is burning he says yes master now when you see that the fire is burning what does it depend to burn on what basis it is burning he says the fire is burning because its dependence on grass and logs as fuel okay so then buddha says suppose the fire burning in front of you is extinguished right then will you ask that the fire in front of you that is extinguished in what direction did it go east south west north so vashakata said no it doesn't apply master the fire depended on grass as when that runs out there is no more fuel is added the fire is reckoned to have become extinguished now buddha says in the same way vacha any form by which a realized one might be described has been cut off at the root made like a palm stump obliterated and unable to arise in future a realized one is free from the reckoning in terms of form they are deep immeasurable and hard to fathom like an ocean they are reborn they are not reborn they are both reborn not reborn they are neither reborn not nor reborn none of these apply right any feeling perception choices consciousness by which a realized one might be described has been cut off at a root made like a palm stump now when buddha said this vachakota realized the teaching what buddha is giving he said let suppose there was a, he gave the analogy of uh, of buddha as a salt tree suppose there was a salt tree and because of its impermanent its branch foliage bark shoots would fall off and only it cons it will consist of pure heartwood in the same way master gotama's dispensation is rid of branches foliage bark shoots and softwood pure in establishment established in the pith excellent master gotama from this day may master gotama remember me as a lay follower right so this was the discussion that happened uh, so the understanding here is that of you know not having these wrong views right not getting bound by these wrong views realizing the right view which is impermanence suffering non self right and understanding these how five these five aggregates arise and fall right right so i hope you uh, you also read this discourse the link is there in the description read the discourse at your end do share your learnings and insights in the comment section and thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo